Well, hey, welcome, Pastor Jeff. Want to have you join me and turn to a remarkable book, Habakkuk. <laughs> Even to, uh, not easy to pronounce or spell it, but a man of God, a prophet. And he's got a word for today. I'm going to look at chapter three. And there are 19 verses in there. We're going to end on a powerful verse that talks about joy. And that's my theme today. In the midst of everything that's going on, you're in the middle of shaking. The Lord said he would be shaking all that can be shaken. Well, and guess what? We're experiencing that, whether it's the pandemic, this COVID-19, whether it's the economy, whether it's uh, political, wild and crazy, Ness that's going on in, in our nation, in the United States, and in others. Um, everything's being shaken. And here's the good news. You were born, you and I were born for this very time. And we are capable of handling it. There's a wonderful verse. I think it's in First Corinthians 10. It might be verse 11 that God's not going to give you anything more than you can handle. Look at that verse. It's a beauty. But let's turn to Habakkuk. I'm reading from the New King James, and it just starts out. I hope, by the way, after this video is over, go to a resource like BibleGateway.com, look at chapter 3 of Habakkuk, and look at it in different versions so that it speaks to you. New King James doesn't always speak to me. Today I'm reading from it, but you choose the one that works for you could be the Amplified, it could be the Children's Bible, the Jewish Bible, the Passion, um, the Message, you know, just the King James, have it sink in, because this is a, a statement of hope at a time of real desolation. So here we go, a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet on Shigianoth. Hey, guess what? I tried to look up what the heck that meant. No one knows. That's the footnote that <laughs> Pastor Jack Hayford left in his Bible. So I have, to, <laughs> I have to go with that. We don't know. But it's a key day. for It was for Habakkuk. Verse 2, O Lord, I've heard your speech, and I was afraid. O Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known in wrath Remember mercy. Yeah, I'm here in California. Any day there could be a classic catastrophe, even in addition to the fires that are raging through our forests. We could have an earthquake. We could have a tsunami. Um, we are certainly under judgment for the wicked laws that our legislature has promoted, including no-fault divorce, same-sex marriage, um, rebellion against the United States by calling ourselves a sanctuary state, changing the law from a, for a pedophile that you may not now be called a pedophile if there's a certain number of ages. Uh, it can be considered something less than pedophilia. Now, all these things are wicked and an abomination in the sight of the Lord. Oh, yes, changing your gender. We're pretty good at that in California. This is what teachers teach young children. So yes, in wrath, remember mercy. Verse three, God came from Teman, the Holy One from Mount Parah, Selah. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. Yeah, before you and I were born, the earth was full of his praise. His brightness was like the light he had rays flashing from his hand, and there his power was hidden. Before him went pestilence, and fever followed at his feet. Yes, he's in charge and command of all pestilence. He stood and measured the earth. He looked and startled the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills bowed. His ways are everlasting. Yes and amen. I saw the tents of Kushan in affliction, the curtains of the land of Midian trembled. O oh Lord, were you displeased with the rivers? Was your anger against the rivers? Was your wrath against the sea that you rode on your horses? 
your chariots of salvation. And verse nine, your bow was made ready. Oaths were sworn over your arrows, Selah. You divided the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered its voice and lifted its hands on high. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of your arrows they went, at the shining of your glittering spear. Praise God. Yeah, who's in charge? You, me, no. The living God, yes. Verse 12, you marched through the land in indignation. You trampled the nations in anger. You went forth for the salvation of your people. Yes, and if you've made a decision today that Christ, Lord Jesus, Messiah, is your Savior, that he rose from the dead, you've confessed it to others, yeah, you have eternity with him. You went forth for the salvation of your people, for salvation with your anointed. Yes, that would be Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. You struck the head from the house of the wicked by laying bare the foundation to neck. Selah. You thrust through with his own arrows the head of his villages. They came out like a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was like feasting on the poor in secret. You walk through the sea with your horses through the heap of great waters. And then verse 16, when I heard my body trembled, my lips quivered at the voice, rottenness entered my bones and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he comes up to the people, he will invade them with his troops. And then these key remaining verses, 17 through 19, speaking to me and to you today, though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Let me say that again, verse 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy, J-O-Y, in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high hills to the chief musician with my stringed instruments. Yes, amen. Joy is our strength. It's also found in Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah built that wall with his team in very few days. How? With the anointing of the Lord after his repentance in chapter 1, where he confessed his own sins, the sins of his family, and the sins of his nation. And then the Lord anointed him for this remarkable project, giving him funds from a pagan king, and then they took the assignment and they bested all the attacks of the enemy. And they built that with one sword in one hand and with a tool in the other in a very number, a short number of days under two months with the joy of the Lord. So here again, even though the fields look barren, even though your life looks difficult, joy, rejoice always. A-L-W-A-Y-S. Why? Because look what is in front of us. This is the quick test. This is a just the test run. This very brief whisper of a life. And now eternity is in front, either hell or heaven. Oh, and by the way, choose the non-smoking section. That's called heaven. That's the eternal life with your creator. Hell is... The smoking section where, yes, it is disastrous, it's hideous, it's horrible, there's no release, and it's eternal. Choose today who you will serve and choose it with joy. 
God has presented you here on the planet for this very time. You have an assignment from him. Oh, P.S. You want to find your assignment? Repent. Spend time repenting. Whatever the sin is, he's, he knows he's already. Take the time to repent. The more you do, the cleaner you become as a vessel of the Holy Spirit, and you begin to talk to him and ask him, what is the unique role that you had for me, Lord, that you planted in me when I was in my mother's womb? These many days later, now here I am, Lord, and I want to know what you want. I want to please you. This world is wicked, and the time is short that I have here. How can I please you? He will tell you your assignment. And if you follow it, great joy, great joy that no one can take from you. I believe that's exactly what happened to Habakkuk. And if it was good for Habakkuk, it's good for you and me. God bless you.